the cleanup crew and one anemone that I bought so that I could get free shipping arrive in 10 days. So there's a few things I need to do to get the Lux 90 ready. The tank's been up in cycling now for about a month and a half. I use Dr. Tim's ammonia chloride and Brightwell Aquatics Microbacter 7, but I also put a lot of live rock in the sump to just populate it with a whole bunch of different types of bacteria. I've also been feeding heavily four times a day with an automatic feeder to really up the biological filtration to get it ready for when those 10 clownfish drop all at once. There's lots of nitrates and phosphates. Anytime I set up a new tank, there's usually just a ton of nitrates and those nitrates, initial nitrates, seem to need some help in order to go down. And then once the tank settles in, my biological filter can catch up. So my nitrates have been like 30 or 40, but I've done a couple water changes now and I believe they're below 20. My phosphates on the other hand have been going pretty high actually. They've been going to 0.2 or 0.3. So I did end up putting in a small amount of GFO into reactor that I'm running 24 hours a day and the phosphates have stabilized at around 0.1. But I still wanna test it and probably do one more water change to bring those nitrates nitrates down even lower. The live rock that I added in the sump just had a ton of copepods on it. So within a couple weeks, I could see copepods crawling around the glass on the display tank. And I also found an online company that sold amphipods. So I added a thousand amphipods to the tank as well to really help as a cleanup crew. So I placed the order and the first cleanup crew arrival comes in 10 days. I, I wrote down what I'm getting. I'm getting Astria snails, Nerite snails, bumblebee snails, hermit crabs, a diamond watchman goby, and then one green bubble tip anemone. And that's just because I wanted anemones anyways, and it was about the right price to give me the free shipping from Live Aquaria. One of the issues is I have had the lights off during the cycle, and I just turned it on for this video. So there isn't any algae growth for those cleanup crew members. So I need to get those lights dialed in first so that there's 10 days of the light cycle to encourage some nuisance algae for that cleanup crew to eat. All right, let's get right to it. We're gonna start with the lights. I'm using the Max Spec Razor X, the 150 watt. I'm a little concerned that I'm not gonna be able to get to my PAR goals based on some videos I watched online, but I think if I crank them up all the way, they might have just enough output to make the anemones happy. I've had the lights off to prevent nuisance algae, but obviously since the cleanup crew is coming, it's time to get them dialed in so that I can get some nuisance algae growth for those cleanup crew members. Here is what I'm thinking for my overall lighting goals for this clownfish harem tank. PAR levels, I am trying to get a consistent 200 to 350 par based on the tops of the rocks right here. So I would expect the edges to be somewhere around 200 and then somewhere around 350 and then back over to 200. Plus or minus 50, I'm not gonna be concerned. So if I can get the levels at least in the middle to around 350, I'll be pretty happy overall. For Spectrum, I know a lot of people just love to run really, really blue tanks. I don't. I like to have more natural lighting tanks, but I'm going to prioritize the PAR output over the Spectrum. So if I need to make this a really blue looking tank, just to give it enough par, I will do that. And I'm kind of expecting this to look a little bit blue, but I'm also gonna crank up those whites to give it a more natural look, as much as I can anyway. For the photo period, we're gonna basically do a modified AB Plus from Ecotech. We're gonna have a seven hour photo period where the lights are gonna be on their full intensity of 200 to 350 par. And I'm gonna do an hour ramp in the morning and then an hour ramp in the evening. Let's get to work. I'm actually really glad that I bought a par meter a couple months ago because we're gonna get this dialed in perfectly and we'll be back in a few minutes and we'll share all the results with you.
Well, we did okay with the lights, actually. So let me show you the schedule I'm running and then the par. So let's start with the par. I don't even think you can read this. I'm so sorry it's so dark. Maybe you can read it. This is a picture of the tank, right? And so you can see, I need to look around. I can't read backwards. In the back corner, 130, 160. But then the tops of all of these rocks, 265, 280, 290, 275, 265. While it's not quite at the 350 I was looking for, at least the majority of the tank gets over 250. So I think that will be fine for the anemones. I was hoping for a little bit more, but I think it's okay. The schedule worked out pretty good, I think. There are four programmable channels. You basically have your white channel, two blue channels, and then like your green and your red channel. So here's what I ended up with to get those par readings that I just showed you. At 0700, we have all the channels at zero. 0800, we take everything up to 20%. So a really slow ramp to 20%. So A, 20%, B, 18%, C, 20%, D, 12%. From eight to nine, we ramp up to 100%, our full photo period. So that's A, 100, B, 90, C, 100, D, 70. Then we keep that there for seven hours and that gives you those maximum par ranges of around 250 until 1600, 4 p.m. with the same thing, A100, B90, C100, D70. Then we do a two hour ramp in the evening from that 100% to the 20%, so 1800 hours or 6 p.m. A is 20%, B is 18%, C is 20, and D is 12%. And then we go from 1800, three hours to 2100 hours, 9 p.m., a slow wind down all the way back to all the channels being at zero. I'm, I'm not gonna touch that schedule. That's the lighting schedule. That's what it's gonna stay at. I'm not gonna adjust it even once. I promise, because that is my biggest problem in this hobby, and I think one of the reasons I have problems with anemones is I always tinker. I'm not gonna tinker. Those lights will remain constant until this tank is broken down, which will hopefully not be for many, many years. I think it's time also for another water change. I've been testing the water, especially for the phosphates and the nitrates every other day, maybe a little bit less than that. And I know the levels are a little bit high. My ultimate goal is to keep my nitrates between three to five parts per million and to keep my phosphates around 0 0.07 to 0.15. I think my goal would be 0.1. I think my phosphates have been pretty close to that, but my nitrates have been really, really high. So let's do a quick water test, see the results, and then we'll come back. Just like I thought, the nitrates and the phosphates were both high. The nitrates obviously being way high. The phosphates were higher than I expected, but I've only been running my GFO reactor 12 hours a day, so I'll just up that to 24 hours a day. Luckily, I made a fresh batch of my Aquaphorus salt water yesterday, so let's do a quick water change. 20 gallons, so somewhere around 40% of the tank, I think. One more task, it's the mesh screen. In the first shipment, I'm getting that Diamond Watchman Gobi, so because I have a fish in there, I need to make a mesh screen. I've gotten pretty good at doing DIY screens over the years. I have some videos, I'll put links down below to how to make these. They're nothing special, the ones I make, but they work, but this one's gonna be really challenging because see right here, I have the auto feeder, and then the lights are also on the rim of the tank, which means I can't just do my standard rectangular shape. I'm gonna have to do little cutouts. So luckily I bought some like adjustable angles from Red Sea. So let's get on that. Let's make it. And we'll come back and we'll show you the results. I don't think it'll be anything special, but hopefully it'll work. This is, this is not my best work. So on the one side where I have the automatic feeder, I use this little red C bracket thingy to make this shape. 
right? Right there. And on the other side, I had to cut it around the light fixture so you can see the shape of it. It is a little wobbly, a little janky, and there's still a couple gaps. And I think it will be safe enough, I think. I, I think it'll be fine. Um, I wish I would have made this better, but honestly, I'm not. I'm just. I'm just not great at doing these sorts of things. But hopefully, it won't look too bad because it's such a beautiful tank, and I don't want to ruin it with this nasty-looking thing. I might have to go and get some sort of custom lid made eventually, so that it really makes this tank pop. It works. It works. That's all that matter. We have a mesh screen. Well, believe it or not, it's actually 11 days later. The livestock has arrived. It was supposed to arrive before noon, but because of all the shipping issues, it arrived at like 7 p.m. So I took some B-roll of the unboxing and the drip acclimating. So let me show you that now, and we'll be back in a second. Now we wait. I have my first livestock in there. I'm gonna test my phosphates and my nitrates frequently, like daily. I'm gonna do water changes as those nitrates creep up. I'll adjust my GFO levels to keep those phosphates really, really dialed in. And then I'm hoping within two weeks that we are going to get a clutch of eight, nine, or 10 clownfish, and then maybe seven to 10 bubble tip anemones. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to Marine Depot and my first fish tank. Give this video a thumbs up and don't miss out because in a couple weeks, we are gonna be coming back at you with the addition of clownfish and a whole bunch of bubble tip anemones. It should be really exciting, so stay tuned. As always, happy reefing everybody, be well. We'll see you next time.